Oh, here we are, <laughs> talking about talking, but also researching water fuel process in uh, a place in Australia, which we will remain nameless just for now. And this is the car, and this is the engine, of course. Well, what we've got here today is what we saw the other day, a water fuel cell. As you can see, zooming in. I don't know if you get a good picture on that. There's a um, mesh in there, core, three, three um, meshes in there, a center electrode, negative or positive, doesn't matter, and then a floating unit that's not connected, it's insulated from everything else, and then an outer mesh filled with water, a teaspoon of caustic in about four liters, so this is about a quarter teaspoon to two liters. Um, here we'll see the gauge, there's a vacuum gauge, the maximum, uh, the vacuum runs in that direction as it increases. The tube here runs flexibly all the way in and under the um, cavity where the, where the normal um, breather off the manifold comes in. I'll just get a shot of that round here. Coming in underneath there. If you can see that without backlight. kick the engine over, then we'll do a reading off the vacuum, and then we're going to read off this um, voltmeter. It comes on about 13 volts, and then, then decays. Now, this unit will work under, as long as the vacuum is connected and produce gas without being electrically connected. Now we're going to electrically connect it and you see a lot more gas. 13 volts approximately. So now we'll connect the uh, voltmeter up. Can you come and hold the voltmeter on please, Peter? Fingers up Peter. The fingers up Peter. Peter fingers. <coughs> Focus on the voltmeter. 8, 7, 5, 7, 4, 13, 4, 7. Now, now disconnecting, and it's dropping down to, what's that, 1.3? Yeah. Okay. Now you've got 1.2 volts. There's still bubbles being formed in the chamber there, in the cell. 1.14 volts, still gas coming out. There's no connection on the battery there. We charged it and uh, dropped down to below one volt now to 700. Should drop down to 170. We'll check it again in a minute or two. it so that you can see it coming away from the actual unit. See how that's producing that? And then now I'll just touch the, uh, the ignition. That's still connected. I'll now disconnect. You can watch the unit. Produces exactly what you require. about this is that you're now getting more water out of these doors, which you could in fact recirculate and make the unit operate fully.
by himself up and everything. What do you actually wind up to then? Nothing. Plastic leaves. Nothing. Man, it's just wind up to itself because it's charged. And what's that? Yeah, it becomes a battery. Yeah, it's a battery. Three minutes to three miles. Yeah, so we had to do up about five minutes before. Now, so that's producing its own gas. You oh, see right. the gas? Yeah. Right. And when you hook it up to the original battery, then your water fills full of... See how that vapour immediately comes off? That's what was done in my units before. You will get heaps more vapour when you have a stainless steel outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understand? But just for the practical purposes, being able to see it. Yeah. So that's now with it, now connected. See, actually, that, that verifies my idea on these polythene extendable units. Because you can see that it's only using steel, the gas, what it is pulling off under its own, see? Mm. And it's not using any of its own. Yeah. See that? That means that. When you have a flexible unit, the gas you produce with current expands the unit. If you didn't have it attached to your battery, when she's charged, yeah, fully charged, that's still, still, still start. That's still, huh? that's still start. That's still one without the charge. Yeah, so we've got, has anyone got a, uh, a pressure gauge? Yeah. Means that you, you haven't got your vacuum lift on the water. Right. Is that right? Yeah, right, yeah. When you've got a solid container, you can lift that amount of water clean out through the top of it. Yeah. Because you take off your vacuum there, you've got pressure because the lid is right. pressurizing. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Because you can just take all that pressure. Oh, the, 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 amount, the amount of fluid. Straight in under the unit. Where your venturi lid top of your motor goes directly under your throttle, under your target. Thank you. Um, leader. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're putting the gas directly in where the exhaust gas uh, or the bypass blow gas that comes from the top of the motor goes directly under your, your throttle. It's um, under the carburetor so that you've got maximum vacuum direct into the motor. Okay. The, with, um, with the vacuum gas and everything else you, you have to have gas to motor usage, air and gas, um, intake of air and gas, mm -hmm. to the um, exact fine critical point, it's a hair whisker line, the same as the distributor, when you cut off your petrol and go to your gas, on petrol you can turn your distributor like that and it hardly does anything to your motor. Mm -hmm. When you put the gas on, you move it, oh, mm -hmm. not even a, the width of a piece of foam and paper. And your motor will shake like anything, or shake like anything either way. And you have to hit that exact point or else you won't get your efficiency, you won't get your motor to run Change the distributor. The distributor has to come, when you cut off your petrol, if you run pe petrol by itself, you are, you set at your normal, um, whatever it is, eight degrees mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, if you, um, if you hook up the petrol and gas, you would then, instead of eight, you would come up to say about 15. 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. When you cut out petrol altogether, you would come from 15 up to somewhere in about 25 to 30, maybe more. It depends on the, the vehicle. Whatever vehicle is all different by that. You have to come straight around to that. You can start it at your 30 degrees advance um, with your gas, off your ignition, and she will start like that. First go. If you go back to one drop of petrol with the gas, she will go root like the timing is too far advanced like normal, mm -hmm. right? So if you go back to your petrol, she's too far advanced. If you're on the gas, she'll pearl over like she's just starting on normal petrol. Mm -hmm. So it's that critical of alignment. And when you mix with your vacuum and everything, you have to get your right gas to your right air mm -hmm. with the ga with um, hydrogen oxygen vacuum. Right, so right, sure. And if you don't get that, it's that critical that she won't go either. Mm -hmm. so, uh, experimental stage, right? Yeah. I'm not going into it, but I have had a Rover 3500 V8 with twin carbies, a Zenith T2 
same as SU carvings running. And that was with a solid unit. I didn't understand why the vehicle seemed to start and run perfectly when nobody else seems to be able to hit it. I was a Leyland P76 V8. Now the whole motor on it is open. It has an open dipstick, it has an open oil cap, it has an open motor. It has a, a, a petrol pump on the bottom which has two little breather holes in it and they are open, which air goes to the sun. Now I have never had it running on a solid stainless hydrogen unit because two things happen. I've had it running on a polythene unit with plates in it, which you have on tape, and that unit expanded. When you powered on, it expanded. There was a pressure there. When I first took that up, hooked up to the motor, the motor polluted ten times worse than my petrol. Ten times worse. And it had a pressure. It was pressurising the sump out. But it was dangerous. Hooking up to a polythene unit or an expendable unit or a contracting one of any sort, whether it's stainless and it can expand under, under acceleration or anything, it's dangerous. It'll blow up. So the, the Rover V8, uh, the, the Lola V8, <coughs> it run. I went from Casino to Lismore and back again, polluting in the motor itself all the way. But I don't know why he didn't blow himself up because that unit was expanding under acceleration. The unit just expanded out. And if that gas can get out anywhere, you're gone. The car, everything around is gone. With a solid unit, it does the opposite. The solid unit has a vacuum to the sun, gives you tremendous power, gives you tremendous backing off, and gives you smooth running, economy, and no danger. No pollution. No pollution in the motor or out the exhaust at all. None. We've had readings on that. We've put it over an analyzer, and it don't read. You put a polythene unit on, and you get the opposite effect. You get a pressure in your sump, which then blows fumes and smoke and soot and shit out. But it also pressurises the unit. It also makes everything wrong. Wrong way to go. So they're the two things I've had. The next, I've made a few units. I've made polythene ones. I've made um, stainless steel ones. I've made stainless steel ones. What can expand under that? And they're very, very, very dangerous. Polythene ones don't seem to be as dangerous, but I... No one in the world can get me to run that one again. So the idea would be to have a stainless steel uh, cylinder and put some neutral plates in. You know what some I mean? Neutral, neutral tubes, plates. yeah. We've explained yeah. that on the, um, on the, the, the video before. Yeah, it's, it's already explained, so that's what you know what to look at when I say that. That then will give you what you need. Because if you don't do that, and you have uh, big units like what you have here now and so on, you're going to use a lot of amperage um, you're going to flatten batteries, it's not going to do what you want, you're going to end up in trouble that way. I've already had those big ones running, and 10 minutes you flatten the battery and drain the north motor. Every bit of north. That's if you don't have the neutral plates in it, or if you That's do. That's if you don't. But if you do. It becomes smaller units like you've already But what about on the big units? Can you put, can we put floaters in there and bring it down to 5 or 7 amps or something? You, in big units, you can, I don't care how big you make them, you can put as long as you've got floaters in there, you bring the amperage down. You bring the amperage down. So we can probably get... The current seems to go from a positive and a negative, and instead of staying at that, whatever it's going to use or form or whatever, it then seems to break them down and bring them back the opposite way, but produces twice the gas. Mm. You've already seen that on video, it shows. Mm. You put a neutral one in that you use a lot of amperage. I mean, you put positive and negative, which is single place, you use a lot of amperage, and you don't seem to get off the gas you want. So the idea will be if you are trying to run a vehicle and use a, a positive and a negative in it, just singly, you're going to have to go bigger units. But to do that, you're going the wrong way, because then you need heaps of flame and amperage, you need bigger batteries, you need mm. more current to run it. So that isn't the way to go. Oh.